Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Claire Broden, and today we'll be discussing with you burglary. First, as I always do, let's look at the elements of common law burglary. So common law burglary means breaking. So what does breaking mean? You create an entry, you, you create an opening in an otherwise enclosed structure or building. Second, entering. So you have to um, place either a body part or an extension of your body part inside that opening. Third, a dwelling house. So the target should be a dwelling house. It cannot be a commercial building. Fourth, of another. Fifth, at nighttime. So it cannot be at daytime. Six, with intent to commit a felony therein. So those are the elements of common law burglary. Now let's look at Texas law of burglary. Under Texas law, there are three burglary statutes or sections. Okay, the first is section 30.02, under which there are three methods to commit burglary. Second, burglary of coin operated machines. And third, burglary of vehicles. So under section 30.02, there are three ways to commit burglary. First, the person enters a habitation or building not open to the public with intent to commit felony, theft, or assault. So note that here, under the first method of committing burglary, there is illegal entry, either of a commercial or a residential building that's really not open to the public, okay? And here, the, even if you commit a misdemeanor theft or misdemeanor assault inside, if there's an intent to commit those, it would be considered burglary. The second form is when the person remains concealed with the intent to commit felony theft or assault in a building or habitation. So how does this come about? Well, in this second scenario, uh, the public probably is allowed to enter the building or habitation, such as a commercial retail establishment, and the person either hides through um, either you know being concealed in a storage storage room or in the restroom or any other place where the person cannot be found. And he does so with the intent to commit felony theft or assault inside that residential or commercial building. Now, the third situation is when the person enters a building or habitation and commits or attempts a felony theft or assault. The third situation is different from the first situation because in the first situation, the person enters because he has the intent to commit felony theft or assault. In the third situation of burglary, the person enters, but initially there's no intent to commit or attempt a felony theft or assault, but he does it as an afterthought. So once he already entered the building or habitation, he suddenly decides, okay, I want to commit the felony theft or assault. So there's a difference between the first type of burglary and the third type of burglary. So what does it mean by without effective consent of the owner? Each of the three forms of burglary requires lack of effective consent. So if the owner or the person, the victim, gave consent because he or she was deceived or, you know, by fraud, then the consent is not effective. Note also that unlike common law, Texas does not make any distinction between daytime and nighttime burglaries. Now let's look in detail at several, several concepts that we need to know. Under the first type of burglary, what is a habitation or building? A habitation is any dwelling, any basically anything, any structure designed for overnight accommodation. So it can be a dwelling, it can be a structure or vehicle, which is adapted for overnight accommodation, such as a trailer, okay, or a like a residential vehicle. And it includes each structure connected or appurtenant to the habitation, such as a curtilage. So, let, for example, a, um, a pool house, okay, or a storage, a storage um, shed, it would be considered a curtilage, and anybody who, who enters the storage shed in the backyard of a residential house would also be liable for burglary. Now, a building is any enclosable structure, okay? So how do we know whether or not a structure becomes a habitation? There are several factors to consider. First, whether the structure is used as a residence. Second, whether the structure contains bedding, 
furniture, food, and other items commonly found in a residence. Third, whether utilities are connected. And fourth, whether structure is ended, intended to accommodate persons overnight. So if it, you know, if the structure falls or is can accommodate any of these, it would be considered a habitation. Otherwise, it's not a habitation and property does not fall under the, you know, it, any offense over there would not be considered as burglary. Now, are the following considered structures for purposes of burglary? Fully roofed masonry structure surrounded by fenced parking lot, but not enclosed because entry portals do not have any doors. I want you to be able to, I want you to pause after you read this slide and then write down your answers on a separate paper and then come back and I'll give you the answer. Number two, floating boathouse. Three, fireworks stand on concrete blocks with axle and wheels attached. Four, covered outdoor bandstand. Five, picnic pavilion. And six, basketball court. Now, the key to determining whether a structure can be the target of a burglary is whether or not the structure is in enclosable. So I want you to pause again this video, go back to the book on burglary, rob on burglary, uh, robbery and criminal trespass and look for the answers because it's in the book, okay? Now let's go to the next slide. How do you determine intent, okay? Because the first, Form of burglary requires that the person enters the habitation or building with the intent to commit felony, theft, or assault inside. Well, intent is determined through circumstantial evidence, such as entry without consent at nighttime, whether or not the offender wanted to flee from the scene, the offender's words and conduct, his fingerprints at the crime scene, or his recent unexplained possession of property taken from the scene. So let's look at how many counts of burglary there are. You reside in Wood Hollow Apartments, apartment number eight. While at work, your apartment is burglarized. Upon your return home, you discover that six of your neighbor's apartments were also burglarized. How many burglaries have occurred? I want you to pause this video, think about it, you know, write down your answers and come back again to know the answer. Okay, class. So the answer here is that there would be six different types of burglary, separate six different counts of burglary, because habitation includes each separately secured or an occupied portion of the structure. So here, since six apartments were burglarized, then there are six burglaries and not just one. The penalty for burglary first, if it's burglary of a building, it's a state jail felony. If it's burglary of a habitation and the intent is to commit theft or misdemeanor assault, it's a felony of the second degree. If it's a burglary of a habitation and you intend to commit felony other than theft, such as sexual assault, robbery, arson, or murder, it's a felony of the first degree. Now let's look at the other forms of burglary burglary under Texas law. First, burg of, second, burglary of a coin-operated machine. So what are the elements for first? Without the effective consent of the owner, the offender breaks or enters into a coin-operated machine, coin collection device, etc., with the intent to obtain property or services. Okay, so that's a burglary of a coin-operated machine. Now, what does it mean by coin-operated or coin collection device? It has to be um, a machine that is triggered by, you know, mechanically or electrically triggered by the dropping of a coin inside the machine for it to be a coin operated machine. On the other hand, a coin collection device is any device that simply collects coins, such as um, in the parking lot, sometimes there are coin receptacles for you to be able to park there. That would be coin collection device. Now it's important that when you're, uh, when you're alleging burglary of a coin operated or co coin collection machine, you have to be very precise as to what type of machine you allege in the complaint because of this case. Okay, so in Morris versus State, which is decided by the Texas Appellate Court, the offender was convicted of a burglary of a coin operated machine for stealing money from a parking lot metal collection box. The Appellate Court reversed the conviction because the box was not coin operated. 
deposit of the coin did not cause any mechanical, hydraulic, or electrical activity to occur. The coin sat passively in the box, and the charge should have been burglary of a coin collection receptacle. So you can see how it's really important that you're very precise in the allegations of a formal complaint or information. Now, the third type of burglary would be burglary of a vehicle. Okay? So here, the elements are, without the effective consent of the owner, the offender breaks or enters into a vehicle or any part of the vehicle with the intent to commit any felony or theft. So remember again, breaking means creating an opening, entering means um, inserting a hand or any, any part of the human body inside that opening. Okay, it's a class A misdemeanor. Thank you very much for watching this video on burglary. Okay, and I'll see you for my next recording.